All right, we're gonna go over some basic boogie woogie patterns. Uh, you can go like this. Twelve bar blues is something that they frequently play. They'll have this little thing that they'll do, this routine that they'll play in, say, C, which I'm using C. You can translate transpose these to any key. Say that that's the the lick. You'll do it in C a bunch, and then you'll go to F, and then you'll go back to C in this pattern. And then there's a thing you do, and it goes around. And there's eight bar blues, there's twelve bar blues, there might be a six bar blues. There's all kinds of different patterns that you can do as to whether you do C twice, and then you do F, and then. Those are things you can study in textbooks as far as the progressions. It'd be like one, one, four, one, five, four, one, five, five, one, or one, four, four, one, one, four, four, one, one, five, four, one, five. There, there's different patterns, and you can look those ones up and research them on your own. I'm going to show you the, root, the, the licks, though, and perhaps in some context. There's rocking, which is doing the same. This, this, is, this is really a 50s bass line. You can modify it by going back to the the root. You can go back and forth. My grandma would always do that. And then there's a that's a turnaround, which is a variation on this. It's just you're doing something somewhere with a note on here. Uh, one other, on the note of walking, because this is a type of walking bass, although it's repetitious, it's a set pattern, there is a walking bass where you're playing chords up here. You can do different stuff with it, and, and that would be considered a walking bass with not any particular pattern. But there is um, a variant you can put into this pattern. For the for the five four one at the end, it goes one four one five four one for the patterns. You do five one, and, and instead of doing the five four, you can do this pattern for this. I'll play it again. And this is what Rajel referred to as getting to a note, where you you do whole steps. You're going from here to here. So and you do whole steps and then you you cr you cram them in together and do more half steps until you get there. You do the same thing again. Now you're getting to here. So whole step and half steps the rest of the way, starting with whole steps and down to half steps and move there. And now you got to get to here and there's not a place for whole steps because then you're going here. He's right. You're, well, you're not technically going from here to here. Going from here to here. There's not a room for half steps. So you it's. took that walking bass pattern and, and rocked it like rocking, like a rocking rocking motion with a frozen hand, it'd be... Or however you did it. And, and with the rocking motion, I'm thinking in terms of my pinky. I, I'm gauging based on my thumb because I've practiced enough of these. So I'm, but I'm mostly thinking in terms of my pinky and then just slapping it with my thumb. My grandma played like this, and she said you have to think like a black person. She was from old school, and and they um, the 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 newspaper used some profanity and derogatory racial terms when they described it. But they said that she's a white honky who plays like a uh, an end black person. Anyhow, so she she took it as a compliment. I always took it as a compliment. She said, but I mean you've got to have soul if you're doing blues because that's where it comes from. Otherwise, get out of town. Okay, so. Uh, so, uh, let's see. 
<laughs> you could probably do walking bass with rocking. Um, you can do fun things with this too if you need to rest. Graham would always say rest. And, I, and I'm getting a little more laid back and I'm playing more with my thumb. You can see my thumb moving here more and I'm not rocking so much. Make sure when you do this, you don't play on the side of your pinky like this hard. Make sure you're playing it with joints or else you can injure your pinky. Uh, okay, another boogie woogie pattern is this, which can be useful in both hands. My grandma always hated it. I always loved it. I made her teach me. She probably never forgave me for having to play it so much. Okay special attention to fingering. And and you can add extra stuff to it. Uh, um, but we'll get to that in a second. So and you throw a swing to it. It's supposed to sound like a train because this is old underground railroad music. play the same thing up here in the octave and then and throw in for free stuff like that. Um, and there was what my grandmother called a constipated ninth. Um, this is a uh, because it's actually, that would be the ninth, and then you've got the C basic harmony taken care of in the bass, and so she goes at and she calls, Oh, hey, I don't know what to call it. None of the chord books had it, so I always called it the constipated ninth. And it kind of sounds like a train whistle if you play it in proper context. Or you can transpose it. Uh, there's another technique called upping the chord, where you take something and take it up half a step and back down. This is used in blues and jazz. Which, usually it's quick. I'm getting a bit more elaborate by going by going all the way up here. But my grandma always called it upping the chord anyway. Um, uh, Classic Blues likes to do this. Uh, play, play with the distinction between the major and the minor by going like this. Uh, in a chord like this, such as D or E or A, borrow from your second finger. Uh, let's see, so what are some other boogie woogie patterns? Here's one. Yes, I'm cheating. The goal is to play it. You're not playing a scale where exact fingerings have to matter. Um, but Four years I've done this. 
is you start out slow. It's the way you do everything that's complicated is start out slow and slowly put it together. And this is a pickup. It comes in before the regular routine starts, so it would be... And remember, if you can only play something fast, you can't play it well. You need to be able to play it both slow and fast. A lot of times you start out learning something slow, you get faster at it, you stop practicing it slow, and you can only play it fast, and you can no longer play it slow, and when it comes to that point, you need to go practice playing it slow again, just to round your ability out, and then faster will still sound even better. I'm trying to think... Oh, here's another one. This is it. Another thing you can do, um, this is a right hand gig, of course fidget with this. Starting on your basic starting point and moving from there. Pay attention to whether to which notes are the downbeat, because this is a pickup. That's the actual downbeat here. This is a pickup, which comes before the actual regular beat pattern stuff. So this would be and one and two and three and four and one and so it'd be. So this comes in at the end. start by that's probably about how the practice would sound when you were first getting going if you were hitting all the right notes and it moves forward and that's how all of it starts that's how Charlie Brown starts or Peanuts, Linus and Lucy um, Trying to think if there's another. Uh, you you can mix them up. You can do you can do that with a rocking walking bass. Interesting. Uh, a gospel walk Rajel taught me was back to getting to something. So you keep this right here. There's your getting to. And then taking this and moving it back down. Doing the same thing again in this hand. In the bass, you're following the bottom part the first time, and then you're following the second part the first time. You can do this with walking, with the blues. Those are two very ways, various ways of doing a bass. And that's a, that's, a, that's that's coming down on the chord. Back to upping the chord again, only you're not doing it. You're not doing that, you're just coming down to it first. And you can run it from there. That's a classic blues turnaround. If you take the swing out of it and play it straight, it sounds like church music.
That's the difference of church music, is because the guy playing the piano at the bar Saturday night is the guy playing piano Sunday morning, and he played the same thing, and all the people who were in both places got mad, because this is God's house, and we don't do that. Yeah, right. And so he took the swing out of the Saturday night music, the... He took the swing out of that, and it's... Play it fast, it's shout music. It's all the same notes though. So I guess those are some patterns with blues. You can throw a blues scale in there. and just incorporate different things and put them together. And that's all I have to say about that.